Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online series 8 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. Today we're trying out a really cool Zekrom team. Now I think we featured Zekrom a couple of weeks ago, but it's been a while since we've used the Pokemon, and I think that uh, this team is definitely a little bit different from the previous one that we had used, so I wanted to feature this. It was built by a Chinese player, I've linked their Twitter down in the description below. They wrote a really phenomenal in-depth team report for this team as well, so please go check that out, that's also linked in the description below. Uh, and it's just really cool because it offers potential ways to approach a lot of the common matchups that you might see in the format. So huge credits to the original creator for the team. And yeah, a lot of interesting components here. You've got the weakness policy, Zekrom, you've got the Comfy to activate that policy. Uh, and then you also have Choice Scarf, Water Urshifu, as well as Thunderous with Life Orb, Prankster, Rain Dance, Weather Ball, and Thunder Wave. So a lot of things that you don't see very frequently with this team, I think. Uh, you know, a lot of these Pokemon, you might expect a certain strategy. For example, Physical Zekrom, Physical AV, Thunderous, uh, Classic Focus Ash, Urshifu. Uh, Comfy often also doesn't carry Protect. So the cool thing about this team is that it has a lot of tricks up its sleeve, and a lot of those are often designed especially for best of one play. Uh, can obviously be good in best of three as well, but in best of one in particular, a lot of these things will often give you a upper end. So uh, yeah, I'd really recommend reading the team report because I there were so many good points that I agreed with. One of them being the original team creator when building this team, you know, obviously you want to feature Zekrom, but they also were like, I want to have a positive matchup against the majority of really common archetypes. And I think that's one thing that this team does well. So to be, be able to use a less common restricted Pokemon, but have positive matchups across the board is definitely an impressive sign. And yeah, I just want to feature Feature Zekrom. I think this team has a lot of cool components, so let's get right into it. Thanks as always for watching Road to Rank. If you enjoyed, please share support by leaving a like on the video. I'd really appreciate it. As I mentioned, have a upgraded setup at least for the next couple of weeks while I'm casting the Players Cup 3. Uh, might as well have some fun with the green screen that we have in the meanwhile. So someone yesterday was like, you should pretend like you're getting eaten up by the Guzzlord right there. Uh, so I figured I'd throw that in as a background, but question of the day, I want to know what green screen images you want. Let me know down in the comment section below. You, uh, a bunch of you gave some really good suggestions already in yesterday video but I figured I'd make that a more formal question of the day so yeah uh, let's jump into today's episode I think uh, I'm really excited to just try out Zekrom in general a lot of cool components to this team uh, and so you might be wondering what's the idea between the Thunderous and the Urshifu and once again if you have any questions about this team I highly recommend just reading the team report to begin with but one cool thing you can do is set up Rain Dance and then Urshifu can just do a lot of damage with Surging Strikes for example so uh, Groudon obviously is one of the biggest counters to Zekrom in terms of restricted Pokemon out there and so the Thunderous plus Urshifu combo is really cool you can Weather Ball take advantage of the Sun for example and hit Venusaur uh, as the regional creator mentioned you can also just Rain Dance Surging Strikes into Groudon the possibilities are really endless so yeah all right it's gonna be calyrex shadow rider team for the first game here um one thing to note is that scarf or Shifu actually outspeeds max speed calyrex shadow so that's definitely gonna be good two waves kind of interesting here now they do have stack attacka which concerns me a little bit um they also have redirection support with that togekiss i don't know if that's really too much of an issue though um this Clefairy also has Sing. Sing is pretty cheeky. It's very high variance, but sometimes you just don't have a better play to go with with Clefairy. Hmm. What is my opponent lead here? I mean, they they might expect physical Zekrom, so like leading Insin definitely could make some sense. Um. Honestly, comfy Zekrom doesn't even feel that bad. I think Urshifu is good just for late game surging strikes. That's often like what's going to close out matches for you when using this team. And for the last one, part of me likes Incineroar because it gives me a better answer against the the stack attacka. If you're my opponent, what are you not bringing here? I don't think you bring Rillaboom. It's just tempting to go with Clefairy here. But I think stack attacka is pretty scary, and I like the idea of having Intimidate against it. And even if my opponent doesn't bring stack attacka, Instant still always you know, puts on pressure with Fake Out and general support. So, yeah. Uh, let's get into this one. Uh, I think uh, we are pretty close to using all of the serious restricted mods. Like I said, at this point, it's the two Kiram forms, it's Giratina, it's Lunala. So, hopefully, I mean, we should be able to feature every restricted Pokemon that is like you know pretty competitively viable by the end of you know Series Eight, which is exciting. And maybe we'll get some meme teams in with like Comfy or regular Kiram or regular uh, just all the regular Pokemon. So that could be exciting as well. Uh, it's Calyrex plus Togekiss, and honestly, what I want to go for here, if you're my opponent, I think you go for Follow Me. So what I want to do is kind of just go for a Protect here, because I think you often expect the Zekrom here 
Well, I guess you don't expect me to drain kiss, but the thing is like Comfy rarely carries protect. So what we can do is just protect and max lightning, try to get a one hit KO onto Togekiss. I guess my only fear is that this doesn't one shot Togekiss because it's really like specially defensive. Uh, they switch out into Incin. Okay, so obviously trying to intimidate there, which also makes sense because the ball is in my opponent's court right now, right? Like, I how risky is it for me to drain in Kiss when I know my opponent can make a play like this? Pretty risky. Um, they're not going to max their Calyrex, so it could just be Astral Barrage. I feel like that would make the most sense here. Um, either way, it's not a terrible turn one for us. I mean, we get Electric Train up, so we pressure with a really powerful Max Lightning on the next turn. Uh, and I can still go for, you know, self-draining kiss. Let's see. But I, I do think Protect is really good on Comfy, because I think very few people expect it these days, even though, you know, it is a move that makes a lot of sense. Oh, they actually go for Will-O-Wisp. Okay, uh, that's fine by me. That's the beauty of this team. You are special, Zekrom. So people don't expect that. Uh, however, my opponent will be able to tell that I'm special after this turn one, because I did that much damage, right? But that's okay. Um. So this next turn, I can... Setting up Trick Room is honestly really compelling here. Um, my opponent has Calyrex Togekiss. I don't know. I could get hit by a Fake Out for sure. And I do have Instant in the back. Interesting to see Will-O-Wisp though. Because like right now, the question is, who's my opponent's Dynamax option? I wouldn't be surprised if Calyrex was um, Focus Sash here. I'm down to go for a Draining Kiss onto Zekrom, though, and then go for a Lightning, I think, onto Calyrex. Yeah, that works with me. My ba opponent basically went all in that first turn. Ooh, they actually switch an instant, so I will get the uh, Comfy off. Okay, that's sick. That is very good, especially because they bring in Rillaboom, so... I mean, you have the max Calyrex, right? Your other max options are instant Rillaboom. I guess Togekiss could be if it's offensive Togekiss. And yeah, they're not going to max Rillaboom. Or sorry, Calyrex. Which really makes me suspect this is going to be... Um, Focus Ash. Yeah, it's just gonna be Astral Barrage. That's fine. I mean, Zekrom and Comfy are putting in work right now. We get rid of Terrain, which maybe isn't great for us because I'd like to self heal for more. Yep, there's the Focus Ash. Okay. Uh, the way my opponent's playing this makes me think they're trying to Dynamax Togekiss, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, the question is how fast your Togekiss is, I guess. Um, one more turn of Dynamax left on my end. Plus two special attack, which is good. I could Worm Wind into Rillaboom. It's just awkward with the Togekiss in the back. I guess it's offensive? And I could really get swept by Togekiss. So I have to be careful about that. You could obviously fake out right now and just Astral Barrage. Mm, I'm down to go into Incineroar here, I think and Wormwind into Rillaboom. Well, actually, I don't really, I shouldn't be worried about Rillaboom here, right? Let's just Lightning into Calyrex because he covers the Togekiss switch out. Is that switching into Togekiss? No, they went into Ensign. That's also still fine by me though. Um, Yeah, you, you don't want to Wormwind or Quake there because Togekiss can actually switch into either of those. And even though it's really risky for my opponent to switch into Togekiss, Basically, it's still a safe option, and it very heavily punishes a misplay from my opponent's end there. Yeah, so this isn't bad. Because, like, Rillaboom is very useless for my opponent this next turn, right? The only problem is that I think they're positioning themselves towards a Dynamax Togekiss kind of game. So my question is, how fast is your Togekiss? Uh, they also... What are they going for here with Rillaboom? Okay, they just opted for Glide onto Comfy. Sure, that works for me. Okay, so your max options are, I mean, you still could max Calyrex Shadow Rider, I suppose, but it's such low HP, I wouldn't think it makes too much sense. Yeah, so there's Togekiss. We've got Snarl. I don't know if my Zekrom outspeeds, that's the problem, right? I wonder if it's like Crit Kiss, that'd be really interesting. Because the play I want to make the most right now is just Parting Shot into Togekiss and then Protect Zekrom. Suppose they could always airstream though, so maybe I'll just Rising Voltage because. Well, let's see. I, I really think this is offensive Togekiss then, and that makes a lot of sense because Calyrex isn't a really strong Dynamax option for what my opponent brought, so. Uh, 
we could very easily still lose to Togekiss right now, because our best Togekiss answer was Zekrom, and they did a good job stalling out Zekrom's max. So my question here is, does your Togekiss outspeed me? Because I don't have that much speed investment in Zekrom. Protect Rillaboom, that's fine. I'm never targeting that slot, so that's good. <laughs> Zekrom outspeeds. <laughs> nice. Uh, we actually don't pick up the one-hit kick. It's weakness policy? What? Huh. Uh... Well, that could be a problem. The good thing is we're Choice Scarf Urshifu, and I don't think my opponent's gonna expect that. So with Scarf Urshifu, I can knock out Togekiss here anyway. I think I have to actually go into Urshifu right now. Wow, I didn't expect weakness policy. I was also expecting the KO onto Zekrom there, but yeah. Uh, I just hope Surging Strikes KOs from the range. Ah, it should. There's no way it doesn't. So I think we just Surging Strikes here into Togekiss and then go for a Draco onto Rillaboom. What do they have in the back again? We know they're not a Salt Vested. It's Calyrex Shadow in the back. I think Draco here is fine. So let's see. This is where Scarf comes up huge for us, I think. Because ideally, it just allows us to hit Togekiss and you know prevent it from getting another attack off. You can always max guard Togekiss, though, and then wood hammer into Urshifu. Mm. But then you risk me protecting, like double protecting. I don't know. Nice. Okay, they don't protect. All right, that should be a KO. It's really close, but I think we did just enough damage with that rising voltage. Nice. Okay, perfect. Uh, Comfy can just draining kiss to knock out Calyrex in this endgame. So yeah, Scarf Urshifu. I mean... This is exactly why I wanted to feature this team, right? We got the weakness policy Zekrom off. We got the Scarf Urshifu in. Like, it's pretty much perfect, right? They could still win if they high horsepower here into Zekrom, but they don't. I don't think this KO is because of Intimidate. Yeah, they needed to go for Woodhammer there if they had it. Nice. So you can see how my opponent basically went all in on turn one. Uh, one thing that the team creator wrote in the team report that I really agree with is, as I've always talked about, like the element of surprise in VGC, right? My opponent spent so much effort on turn one to try to shut down physical Zekrom, but because we were special, it put them in such a tough spot. I think if they max Calyrex, it could have been a bit, little bit more interesting. I can definitely see why they wanted to play towards max Togekiss. That also explains the lack of a safe follow me on turn one. I'm guessing they just don't even have follow me on that Togekiss, given that it's a weakness policy set. So they also had some tricks up their sleeve. But in the end, uh, the turn we were able to just safely get that policy boost on Zekrom put us in really, really good shape. So yeah. Um... This is the other upside of Scarf Urshifu, we just outspeed uh, Calyrex Shadow Rider as well. So, yeah, that was perfect. Um, in the end, it was scary though, because I didn't feel like I had total control of the game. I also wasn't sure if Togekiss was going to be faster than our Zekrom here, because the Zekrom isn't max speed from what I remember correctly. It has a little bit of bulk investment, so that could have been really scary. But, yeah, couldn't be happier about the uh, first game that we could have had with Zekrom here. So, we'll definitely take that. Um... I mean, one thing to note is that these weakness policy setups can always be a little bit tricky to actually get up and guarantee, especially because redirection is pretty common. Um, so, you know, that's something to always watch out for. Ooh, it's, okay. So I'm a Zenta. Mm. So once again, it's good, great, because my opponent probably thinks we're going to be physical, so they'll probably want to bring the... It, this team is fun, too, because it has Thunderous, so it's like... Uh, we're not, we're not going to be physical Thunderous, but they don't know that. Although I guess that's the, the reason to dissuade them from bringing like Landris or Ensign. They don't have redirection, so Comfy plus Zekrom's pretty good here, but uh, Zekrom really has to worry about Landris T, right? That's gonna be a problem. Hmm. I don't know what my best lead matchup here is. Urshifu is interesting, but my opponent has a Leki, right? That concerns me. I really can't Thunderwave most of my opponent's Pokemon here. I wonder if this is just a Trick Room setup. I feel like it is, actually. There's no way they can deny Trick Room if I just lead Comfy plus Clef, Zekrom in the back. What do I want as the last one? Scarf Urshifu feels questionable, but it's so good in the end game still. I guess it's Urshifu here. The, the Thunderous, like, doesn't... It, it could be interesting, because it could Rain Dance. But there's an Aleki on my opponent's team, and there's Fake Out. So for that reason, it's not that easy to just go, like, Rain Dance plus Surging Strikes, for example, right? Um, 
So the idea behind Clef plus Comfy is I actually don't think my opponent is great Trick Room Denial. I can double protect turn one, follow me Trick Room turn two, bring in Zekrom, and then Draining Kiss. Yeah, like I didn't want to lead Zekrom into this possible combination, right? They just go with Landris plus Zamazenta, so... I mean, your Zamazenta is going to be faster than the Landorus. I don't really care about the defense boost because we have Zekrom in the back. And then if I just go follow me Trick Room turn one, bring in Zekrom, turn two, Draining Kiss, Max Wormwind into Landorus, I feel like we're in very good shape. Yeah. So let's go for that. Why not just Trick Room and follow me? And this is why I really like Sing on this Clefairy. Sure, I could have Dazzling Gleam, but that like damage output is like pretty marginal. Think about it, right? Let's say my Clefairy doesn't go down this turn. What am I going to do the next turn? If I didn't have Sing, maybe just click Dazzling Gleam. They might be going for Swords Dance here. That'd be a good option Um, with Lando. Okay, they just go with Behemoth Bash. That's fine. I honestly want this to KO, but I don't think it will. Because if it KOs, we get a free switch in into Zekrom, and we're looking really good. Oh, nice. That KO'd. Okay, sick. Uh, I'm actually very happy about that KOing. So as long as it's not like, I don't know, self-destruct here, we're good. Oh, they're just going for a flinch. That's their right, that's the right play. Well, they need to get it here. Their life orb. Okay, nice. Oh, that was a sweat. Uh, but now I think we're in very, very good shape. Because I just bring in Zekrom now. And I think Zekrom just crushes my opponent's team under Trick Room, especially because it's special Zekrom, so you can't even swap Intimidates. So the main thing, now that we've gotten this setup, is we just want to make sure we go for the right attacks on the right turns. Um... Like, so Landorus, you basically ask yourself, what are the possible switch-ins? There is no switch-in into a Max Warm win on my opponent's team. The thing is that I think Landorus will probably protect here, but I don't really mind. I'm down to still Draining Kiss and Max Warm win here. Because we've got Babiri on Comfy, right? Just double-checking. Yep. So at minus one attack, I'm not sure Zamazenta's Behemoth Bash KOs us. I could make the read and target Zamazenta, but it's just that like we're already in a pretty good shape, so I don't feel the need to actually make any aggressive reads in this position. So, yeah, and they're a life orb. They're not assault vest, so plus two Wormwind I think would KO them. They switch Outlanders, which is fine. Uh, the whole point of going for a Wormwind here is that they have no switch in. And once again, you can see the beauty of this team. In both the last game and this game, my opponent keep uh, they've kept trying to bring in Intimidate to stop Zekrom, but because it's special Zekrom, it actually doesn't affect us at all. So... We should just get a free one-hit KO onto the Incineroar, which is really good. I'm not sure they'll still be able to deduce that we're special, which is even better. So they bring that Landers back out. We can just warm wind again. Um, ideally, Comfy doesn't faint, because what's awkward is that I did bring Urshifu as the last one. So Scarf Urshifu, not really the Pokemon you want to have under Trick Room. So that might work against us if Comfy faints. Okay. Uh, so I, I could have gone for the knockout on Zamazenta here. I just don't really feel like it's worth it. And that, this is the cool synergy here as well. I actually heal a bunch from Draining Kiss. So we should get the one shot onto Incineroar unless they're Assault Vested. Ah, that could be a little bit scary, but it's base 140 max one win from Zekrom right now. Nice. Okay, that's huge. Gets us an attack drop onto their end as well. Uh, my opponent definitely went for the best play on turn one, though. Rock Slide is absolutely correct because it's better to have some chance of flinching versus no chance of flinching, right? Like, Rock Slide's 30% to flinch, and then you hit 90% of the time. So, 27% chance to deny your opponent a flinch and get a free knockout. Like, imagine if they flinch there on turn one. They probably just win the game. So, it's basically, if you look at it, uh, a coin flip to try to just win the game off turn one. And I think that's absolutely the right move to make. So, my opponent had good awareness to just go for that. And if they get it, it is very much in their favor. Uh... And you know, like, 27% chance is better than 0% chance to potentially win a match, right? So, why not? Okay, so they bring Landers back out. I think this is where Protect is so important on Comfy as well, because I can just keep cycling through Protect. Um, and once again, this is the advantage of my opponent not having any Worm Wind switch, out, switch ins. So, while I think Landers probably protects here, I don't want to risk it. I think we just go for Worm Wind and play it safe right now into Landers, and we Protect here. That drops Zamazenta's attack even further... Landers is still going to take a fair amount of damage through that Protect. Who Dynamaxes from my opponent's end? Thunderous? You don't have a good max option, to be honest. And there's still three turns of Trick Room. So even in the worst case, which is what? Zamazenta switching out into Thunderous and you get a Defiant Boost? Still fine. What I don't want to do is overread into Landorus, for example. Yeah, they're going to max Landorus. Uh, what I wanted to say was reading into Landorus, going for a Protect, right? I max Lightning into Zamazenta. And then Landers just max quakes me. That's the easiest way to throw the match right now. 
I guess my only question is whether or not plus two max Wormwind one shots Landorus, but we are special. Once again, my opponent doesn't know that, so I think the, the special Zekrom is just such a key component because our opponents keep trying to intimidate us. Uh, the reason to protect here is just because I want to stall out my own turns of Trick Room on Comfy specifically and time it perfectly. That's a good max card though, okay. Uh, fine by me though. Yeah, they just bash into Zekrom, or sorry, into Comfy, which is totally okay. Uh, because honestly here, I think we can just go for a Draining Kiss onto the Landorus and Wormwind into that slot. Yeah. Zamazenta's not doing much when it's at minus two attack. I was also thinking of Self-Draining Kiss. I think you probably go for the Double Protect here on Landorus, but kind of surprised they committed a max turn to max guard rather than to just protect there, but I suppose they didn't want to take any damage through protect, and now if you get a Double Protect off, it's actually huge, but they actually opt not to go for a double, so... If Comfy hangs on after... You know, we get the... I, I honestly think it does, but I'm not 100% sure. Either way, let's see. I just wanted to guarantee a knockout onto this Landorus slot. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Perfect. So we get that knockout. Landorus faints. Uh, now we're up. And Zamazenta's at minus two attack. So that's all really good. And my opponent doesn't have, like, a late game Dynamax to play towards. I thought their best option was maybe to just sacrifice Landorus. Uh, and they're gonna go for another bash. So let's see if this even KOs comfy. Minus two attack. No Babiri. We're at over... We're at, like, what? 60%? My guess is we survive, but I'm not 100% sure. Let's see. Oh, we do hang on. This is why Protect is so important though, right? Imagine if I didn't have Protect and my Comfy just faints. Then I'm forced to bring in Urshifu and I'm forced to bring in Scarf Urshifu while Trick Room is up. That's not good for us at all. Um, they have Aleki in the back. That is fine. Yeah, I mean, we can just Draining Kit. Trick Room's still up, right? So they're in really bad shape. Yeah. We have Scarf Urshifu in the back, so I think we just Draining Kiss here onto Aleki. Mm. I lean towards doubling up onto Aleki, but Aleki could obviously protect in this position. It's probably better to just Draining Kiss Aleki and then go for an Earth Power onto Zamazenta, right? Yeah, I think that's the right play here. It breaks a potential Aleki Sash, does a fair amount of damage, we heal a little bit, Aleki does protect. Uh, which means Zamazenta isn't protecting, so we should get the KO here with Earth Power, right? It is plus two Earth Power, but I don't know. Zamazenta is kind of bulky. Either way, though, Comfy plus Zekrom's been phenomenal. And yeah, Zamazenta actually hangs on, but... Uh, hmm, how? That's really interesting. Um, is that a problem? I mean, you're still a minus one, so you're not even doing that much. But I think their play is to double up onto Zekrom right now. I mean, I'm down to just draining Kiss into Aleki and Earth Power into that slot now. Howl's good, though. I think they lose the game. Oh, they just end up forfeiting anyway. Uh, I don't think that was necessarily over, because you could maybe double... Like, you crit into Zekrom. You double up onto Zekrom. I do have Urshifu in the back, and Urshifu can Aqua Jet, so I think we're probably fine in that endgame anyway, but yeah, I was kind of surprised to see Hal. Um, last time we used Zamazenta, it wasn't a Hal team, so I think Hal Zamazenta is quite powerful in the metagame. Um, but once again, I think we've really won both of these games because our opponents keep expecting Zekrom to be uh, physical rather than special. So yeah, you can just see how well-constructed the team is. All right, we got Zashi in here with Rain. Um, T-Wave could be really big here on Thunderous. So I honestly really want to bring that. So if we can paralyze things, that's really nice for us. They don't want Fake Out either, which is really critical, right? But I'm worried about, I don't know, something like a Moongus Zashian lead. I think we want to save Urshifu, because Urshifu Surging Strikes in rain is very good to deal with that Zashian. I could just go with Comfy Zekrom still. But I really want to paralyze... I'm thinking like Thunderous Urshifu? Uh, Comfy plus Zekrom. I don't know if this is the best option, but I kind of want to go for it. The reason why it might not be the smartest is because we might want to conserve that Urshifu for like later on. But the thing is, I can punish my opponent really heavily if they actually just lead the, um, the Zashian. Because we can just Surging Strikes boosted by Rain into uh, Zashian, which is really nice. So, yeah, I think we're going to try to use some of the uh, Thunderous tricks here with Thunder Wave. Weather Ball's not... Well, I was going to say it's not that relevant, but theoretically I could max Thunderous and max Geyser boosted in rain into Zashian for a one-shot. But I don't think that... I still think Zakram's our best max option here. I think the other approach is to maybe consider Trick Room. 
Uh, I guess, I don't know. I, I don't think I counter Amoongus hard enough with what I led here. Like, Comfy plus Zekrom maybe is still better, because Zekrom's bulky enough, I think, to take a super effective attack most of the time anyway. So another approach could have been Comfy, Zekrom, uh, Clef in the back for redirection support, because as long as Zekrom has any HP, that's more than zero HP. Yeah, they led Landers and Amoongus. If we went Comfy, Zekrom, we could have gone Draining Kiss, Max Lightning to prevent terrain, uh, but then what, I guess, is the question. They're gonna know I'm not Defiant here, which is the downside, but they should expect Taunt. So, truth be told, I want to Rain Dance. This is not good for us, right? Like, the, the lead is not in our favor. So, I kind of want to Rain Dance and Surging Strikes. Because the worst case, Amoongus goes for Follow Me. Sure. I still get a little bit of damage onto the Amoongus and get a free switch in. Uh, and the best case is Amoongus... Uh, what would, I don't think Amoongus ever protects here, right? Because you know I'm not Defiant. The best case, though, is if Amoongus, like, didn't go for redirection, Landris maxes, we, we set up Rain, and then Surging Strikes KOs Landris. That would be sick, but I don't expect that to happen. Um, this is why I was saying, though, I don't think I brought a good enough Amoongus answer as my lead. They are going to commit the Dynamax, so if they don't Rage Powder, this is going to be a very interesting turn one. But I think the safest play for my opponent's end is to just Rage Powder, max Airstream into my Urshifu. Yeah, but I would die of laughter if they didn't Rage Powder. Unfortunately, I don't have Taunt here, though. So, I could see them protecting if you're really afraid of Taunt on turn 1, but it doesn't make that much sense. Yeah, they went for Rage Fighter. Good play. Good play. That is the correct play. They did exactly what they needed to on turn 1. Um, yeah, this will be interesting, because I can't Thunder Wave into Landorus. But Landorus is also a pretty good answer against my Zekrom to begin with, so, yeah. I really like Landers and Mungus because if you look at my opponent's team, they don't want Trick Room to go up with most of their team, but Amoongus is a pretty good answer should I bring Trick Room, right? Yeah. So they went for the safe play, which is absolutely the best play. At least the upside is that we don't get spored. Let's see if they go for Rockfall or Airstream. It is going to be Airstream, yeah. Okay. Uh, this one's going to be tricky. I don't see a good way out of this, to be honest, because I can't do what I did in the last game, which is just set up Trick Room easily. I should have thought more about Lando and Moongus as a lead specifically. They're not Life Orb, so I can bring out Zekrom. I was gonna say, how sick would it be if I max Thunderous and then max Weather Ball into Landorus? It'd be sick, but I don't think it works out that well. I'm also nervous about how fast their Amoongus is. Do you outspeed me after two airstreams? You absolutely could. In fact, if you're max speed Amoongus, you might you already outspeed right now. Ah, uh, this is so tough. I don't really see a good way out of this, to be honest, because even if I KO Amoongus, it gives you a free switch into Zashian, which is really bad news for us. I'm gonna bring out Comfy, but I don't see a great approach here, to be honest. What was my best answer against Landorus and Mungus? Comfy plus Zekrom? Clef plus Zekrom? I don't know. Not 100% sure. Okay, so you're faster now. I have Weather Ball. They could rock. You would just rock fall here, right? And Spore? Okay, so I can Thunder Wave Amoongus Protect here. Bring in the Zekrom. Okay, we can still win. I think the way we win is we need to set up Trick Room on this last turn and not get Spore. So I need Land uh, Thunders to faint here. I'm Thunder Waving Amoongus just to cover for the op- Well, I guess since I had Thunder Wave anyway, I could have just brought out Zekrom and Thunder Wave Warm Winded. Ugh, that actually was probably the better play. Um, but they go for Rockfall, which was expected, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think I can see the comeback potential right now. Basically, we need Comfy to survive this next turn to take a rock fall. Warm wind one shot Amoongus. And then we go for- Oh, Amoongus could just protect, so I might want to max lightning to set up electric terrain. Well, they get paralyzed anyway, but that doesn't make a difference here. Mm. <sighs> Maybe I do make the read in. I don't know if Lightning... Well, Lightning's definitely not KOE Moongus. I feel like if I need to win this game because I'm so far behind already, I really need to pick up KOs. Best case is that I activate a policy here. Like, I want a Dynamax Warm Wind into a Moongus and Trick Room here. 
it's just like there's a very good argument to be made to go for lightning onto Amoongus instead, so that even if Amoongus protects here, it can't spore me the subsequent turn. But if they get full parrot either of these turns too, it's fine for us. I just think because we're so far behind, we need to mount a huge comeback right now. We basically need to go all in. Uh, part of it was just my opponent making a really good lead and then making the best possible plays with that lead as well. So great execution. Good, I like great ability to identify, hey, let's play towards Landers instead. Um, and it makes a lot of sense because even if I were Defiant Thunderous, you could just max Rockfall and Rage Powder turn one. So yeah. Let's see if Amoongus protects here. Okay, they don't protect. So this gives us a chance in my opinion. Hopefully Zekrom takes this. Oh, it takes that really well, actually. Okay, hold on. This definitely just turned into a match. I thought Landers, or sorry, I thought Zekrom would take more damage from that. Because we should just get the KO onto Amoongus here. You just activated policy. And now Zekrom ideally can just one-shot anything that's not Landers. I can keep going for um, healing onto my Zekrom. So it's, re it's a really big deal. They didn't switch out Amoongus or protect that turn. Because I think a switch there would give me a lot of trouble because then you bring Amoongus back out for redirection. Um, this is what I was saying, right? I Obviously, like in game two, we set up Trick Room, we just swept. Now in this game, it wasn't that easy to do that because they had Amoongus, but now I've gotten rid of what is probably their biggest threat to me with Trick Room up. Um, I do have to watch out for Politoed and Perish Song though, potentially, because I think that could very well be a win con that they play towards because they've already gotten me down to my last two Pokemon. But the upside is that even if you Perish Song, you don't really do that much damage right now. Uh, and with that attack drop onto Landorus, Landorus is really not looking too great going into turn two. So this was a tough start, but we do have a plus two Zekrom under Trick Room right now and no Amoongus on the opposing side. So even though we started down 2-4, I think this is definitely a, a comeback that can happen. I was nervous about them targeting Comfy. Okay, they bring out a Leki. I mean, that's like the last Pokemon you want to have out right now. Could be AV Landorus. Uh, definitely could be. I think we want to cover Focus Ash Aleki here. So I lean towards Warm Wind into Aleki. What are their switch-ins into Warm Wind? Zacian? I think it's better to get an attack drop here, though. Like, Warm Wind into Aleki and uh, Floral... Well, no, I don't want to take T-Bolt from Aleki, so I'm actually going to double up onto Aleki. Sure, we might get hit by an Earthquake, but that's actually fine. Yeah, they switch Landers out. That's fine by me. Perfect. It should be Zacian. Great. And if we knock out Aleki, then you can't switch in Zacian any further. Although, maybe I could have just won the game if I targeted Zacian there. Nice. They don't protect Aleki. Yeah. I was reading... Because, you know, the thing in dealing with Comfy is you often want to target the Comfy first, right? So I was like, maybe my opponent just goes for like a T-Bolt there onto Comfy. If I double up into that slot, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? The worst case is Aleki protects Landris, crits Earthquake onto Zekrom. Um, but the odds of a crit are obviously pretty slim there, so I'll take those odds, where you'd have to go for that play, and you'd have to get very lucky to come out of the turn positive, right? So, that's a good turn for us. They bring Landorus back out. I feel like it's a Soul Vest Landorus. I don't know, it's not Life Orb, and they switched out. But it doesn't matter, right? Because we still have two turns of Trick Room to work with, so I think the best play is always to max Lightning into Zacian. I mean, I could war- wait, whoa, whoa, wait, I still have three turns of Trick Room left, and a turn of Dynamax, we're at plus two special attack. Actually, never mind, I think it's to Warm Wind Landorus, and then he uh, Floral Healing here. Because I also think Zacian's more likely to protect in this position relative to Landorus. Oh, they don't actually protect either. Uh, I guess my fear is I don't one-shot Landorus here. That actually be really bad. But if we- if we get the one-hit KO here, it should be game over. Let's go, Zekrom. This team is so sick. Nice. This is why you don't give up, right? Like, this is why conserving your Dynamax in Series A can be such a big deal. Yeah, they go for Behemoth Blade. And they're actually gonna target Comfy, which is even better. Uh, Comfy can't really survive at, if they have that plus one boost, but now they're at neutral, we should survive this. And we still have two turns of Trick Room to work with. Uh, oh, look at that, yeah. If Zacian doesn't have max attack, I think Comfy can actually survive even at plus one, but that just ensures that. Huge. Okay, nice. Yeah, the reason I went for that was because I think with Landorus, you typically expect Life Orb, Lumberry, or Assault Vest. We didn't see Life Orb, and I think AV makes a lot of sense in the context of my t uh, opponent's team. I mean, Lum would make a lot of sense as well, but no Swords Dance came out. And also, if you're running Lum, I don't know, you either run Protect or Swords Dance. Swords Dance feeling a little bit more likely. So I was thinking the odds of Landorus actually having Protect there feel pretty slim because we didn't see a Life Orb. That was kind of my deduction, right? 
So we have two turns of Trick Room left. Um, Zacian's at minus one. Oh, sorry, I forgot they were at minus one and not neutral. So I, I think, yeah, plus one, you'd probably KO us, but uh, we can just go for the super effective Earth Power here and go for Floral Healing. That's always the right play, right? Yeah. Because if you go for, if your wing cons double protect into crit, um, and they don't go for a protect, so we should win the game off Earth Power. Yeah. I mean, the special Zacrom's just an absolute monster. And kind of the nice thing is, it's, you know, how much damage you can do even outside of protect, or sorry, e even outside of uh, the weakness policy setup. So, yeah. oh, Dasha actually hangs on, but Draining Kiss should finish it off, so it's fine. Um, huh, they were sword stands. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, in the end, it didn't matter because, yeah, I, I mean, like, as soon as we set up Trick Room and Amoongus fainted, we were in very good shape. What my opponent needed to do was switch out Amoongus into Zacian, uh, or, or, you know, whatever their fourth one was, which was, what, Aleki. Imagine if they switched Amoongus out into Aleki while the turn I was setting up Trick Room. Then you can bring Amoongus back in for redirection, and then we're in pretty bad shape. So, very lucky for us that they gave up the Amoongus the way they did. Because they basically made this Trick Room sweep very, very easy. Relative to, let's say, okay, they go for Protect, but at this point it doesn't matter because Zashin can't pick up two KOs. And we have Priority Draining Kiss, and we have that Special Defense Drop. Although, pretty sure even without the Special Defense Drop, Draining Kiss would do like the 5% that we need to pick up a KO. So, yeah. Uh, I just kind of want to feature the, uh, the Thunderous more. Because, like, Thunderous in the end wasn't able to do very much for us in this game. Um... You might have been wondering, like, why are you worried about Amoongus outspeeding you? But max speed Amoongus is actually decently common these days. So, like, Focus Ash max speed Amoongus is definitely something to watch out for. Um, but Comfy plus Zekrom has just absolutely been dominant in these games. And once again, that's one of the reasons to use special Zekrom. Imagine if we were physical Zekrom. Like, think about how many times we got intimidated in the last three games. There's no way Zekrom does a lot, even after the weakness policy activation. Because, like, the Intimidate just brings you down to minus plus one and then neutral immediately. So... Uh, the special is such a big deal because not only do we not take anything from their end, but then you bring an Intimidator, like, doesn't do very much against us afterwards. So, yeah. Life Orb Kingdra here, Citrus Politoed, yep, with Perish Song. Like I said, that's, like, the one thing to watch out for. Classic Zacian. Oh, how speedy were you, actually? Not max speed or max attack. Interesting. Focus Sash Aleki. Yep, this was max speed. It did have Protect, so, yeah, I think, you, you see they have Thunder? I think they were going for a Thunder onto Comfy. If Comfy faints there, we actually maybe lose that endgame, which is why I went for that double up. It was Koba Amoongus, but instead of max speed, they were min speed, which makes sense. Uh, it was Lum uh, in the end, so not... Um, but it was Lum Sword Stance, exactly, yeah. So, like, Life Orb indicates typically to me you'll have Protect, and because they didn't have Life Orb, I was thinking you're, you're either Lum Sword Stance or AV, so why not target Landorus? Okay, cool. Well, uh, it's been three games, but we'll play a fourth one since, yeah, using this team for the first time. It's been amazing, honestly, and I think that... You know, this is one of the best ways to show off how to use a restricted Pokemon that's not as common. Support it with good partners and also have a lot of surprises up your sleeve, but not surprises for the sake of surprises, right? Surprises that really allow it to take it to the next step. Okay, so we've got a Kyogre team here. I mean, that bodes pretty well for Zekrom, all things considered. Um, Ferrothorn's what I'm nervous about here. I think that's actually probably going to be the biggest problem for us because we don't have great damage output into it. And it resists almost all of our attacks. Ooh, I'm actually really worried about Ferrothorn. I think because of Ferrothorn, we have to bring in Cinnaroar no matter what. Could see it being Taunt Spectrier. Or Bulldoze. Yeah, Taunt Bulldoze makes the most sense here, because you're going to have policy on Metagross, I think. But then, Eject Butted Whimsicott is also something to watch out for here, because I think Spectrier is more likely to carry the Focus Sash. Could be Scarf, too. Hmm. Yeah, I actually really don't know how to approach this. Because I need Zekrom. I think Zekrom, Comfy, Instant, Urshifu make the most sense to me on paper. But in what order? Perhaps we go with Comfy, Zekrom anyway, and then we can play based off what they lead with on turn one, with Instant and Urshifu in the back. The problem here is like Clef and Thunderous are absolutely useless against Ferrothorn, and we absolutely have to respect an Iron Defense Ferrothorn in this matchup. Because once again, Ferrothorn, I mean, anything with Iron Defense, but especially Ferrothorn Leftovers with Iron Defense Body Press. Like, that stuff, that, that set alone can 1v4 an entire team if you don't bring any counters to it. So, yeah. Okay, it's going to be Spectre and Metagross. Now, this is interesting because I have Thunder Wave. Wait, I didn't need Thunderous. What am I talking about? <laughs> uh... Yeah, I mean, I was thinking of leading Thunderous to T-Wave against this specific uh, setup. But I didn't. So what do we do? 
Oh, uh, you know what the move was? It was to lead Urshifu, because I could just Surging Shrike Spectre here. Although, I don't know if that KOs, to be honest. So, turn one, I expect Bulldoze. The question, basically, of who, who does Metagross target? If I can predict the right target and protect with said Pokemon... I would think you target Comfy here, because Comfy doesn't even carry Protect that frequently. Do I have to gamble turn one? I honestly might have to. Mm, I'm going for Protect Max Quake, expecting Bulldoze Max Steel Spike into Comfy. But I, I, I got outled here, and I should have expected Spectrum Metagross. That's like the first lead I should expect when I see my opponent's team in Team Preview. So, what should I have done instead? I don't- if Urshifu Surging Strikes KO Spectre, it's definitely Urshifu plus something. Thunderous would have been cool, because I get a T-Wave Spectre here, so then it bulldozes later. Basically, the reason I'm going for this play is because I think so frequently people expect Comfy to not carry Protect, and if you're my opponent, you really need to die Trick Room here. But my opponent can just insta-win the game if they bulldoze Max Quake into Zekrom. That would probably just- yeah, insta-win. Like, there's no way I come back from that, so. That's the scary thing, right? Because my opponent has the potential opportunity to just win the game outright on turn one. And this is what happens when you don't lead well. Uh, and my opponent led definitely better than I did in this one. Okay, yep, so there's Bulldoze. I mean, the good thing is you activate my policy on Zekrom as well. <laughs> so, let's see. I I'm just going for this because it's just so much... Also, maybe Zekrom can take a Max Quake. Like, that's the other reason why like I feel a little bit better about this play. So, let's see if they Quake or Steel Spike. Uh, moment of truth. Okay, they're gonna activate Polish. <laughs> it's taking so long to like go through the rounds. Uh, okay, it's Steel Spike. Okay. Uh, however, we're still not in the clear because I don't even know if Max Quick one shots Metagross here. So, but this is definitely the turn one that I needed, given that we were playing from behind. And yeah, that was gonna one shot for sure. I don't even think plus two Max Quake KOs, to be honest. But it's better than nothing because what I can do now is protect Zekrom, sacrifice Comfy, and then. Um, Surging Strike should definitely KO that Metagross. If Quake doesn't. Oh, the Quake does. And that, my friends, is how you get out of a really bad Lee situation. And that's why I think Protect on this Comfy is so, so crucial. Uh, you can run, you know, Ally Switch, and there are def definitely a lot of options, but... Um, I'm actually, I want to do, look at Picolytics after this game, because I don't know how often people are running, um, Protect on Comfy these days, but when I played against Comfy, like, before using this team, I feel like I would never expect it to actually have Protect, so, yeah. Okay, they bring out Ferrothorn, that's fine, uh, that's why we have Urshifu and Ensign in the back. I'm just gonna Draining Kiss into Spectrier. Spectrier at best can Snarl here. Um... It might be better to just KO Spectre. I don't know. I'm just thinking maybe we go for a plus one Max Quake into Ferrothorn instead. Assuming they Snarl. Draining Kiss on a Spectre is definitely fine. But I could also just go for the KO onto Spectre outright. Then they bring out Kyogre. We one-shot that. I'm just worried about Ferrothorn getting too many boosts off right now. Um, okay, it's definitely Draining Kiss into Spectre. I think I prefer to get the Knockout onto Spectre right now. Max Quake may have been better, because then it gives me a special defense boost to help against that Kyogre. It's just, I'm just nervous about Spectre or Snarl. Uh, I don't know if that was the right play, though. Eh, they go for will o -Wisp, though. Okay, yeah. This is what I mean. All of our opponents have expected physical Zekrom today, so we've been able to utilize that to our advantage. Yep, that should get the KO. The reason to Lightning there, by the way, is so that you set up the Electric Terrain so you do even more damage with Rising Voltage. I don't know if Rising Voltage would do more than Earth Power if the terrain was off. I think it might. I'm not 100% sure, though. Probably Iron Defense. Yeah. So this is going to be kind of annoying to deal with, to be honest, because I brought literally everything I could to beat Ferrothorn, and it could still just sweep through me. Uh, time is also very heavily in our favor, though, so that's one thing to think about right now. So Kyogre's going to come out. We can take an Ice Beam, but Kyogre can obviously protect in this position. Um... I think the best play is probably to just protect Comfy here. I might honestly max Lightning into Ferrothorn instead, because Kyogre doesn't really threaten me that much, and I can totally see it protecting. So yeah, I'm going to protect max Lightning into Ferrothorn. 
Uh, looks like Kyogre's not protecting. That's fine, though. Because, like, even if you Ice Beam, I can just heal back with the Draining Kiss next turn. They go for Water Spot, which is fine. Yeah, Zekrom's going to take that like an absolute champion. Nice. All right, so we get a plus two Max Lightning in Terrain. That should do at least 50% to Ferrothorn. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Because the thing is, I'm not, like, I'm not worried about Kyogre in this end game. They just go for another Iron Defense, so yeah, that's perfect. Uh, that should seal up the game for us, I think. I think I just go for a Draining Kiss this next turn onto, sorry, not Draining Kiss, uh, Floral Healing onto Zekrom. Um, so then we survive a potential Ice Beam. I mean, this, this duo is so good. It's so intuitive, too, but I think, like, there are a couple of really big things to know, right? The Comfy having Protect and then the Zekrom being special is what really makes this key. So let's heal onto the Zekrom here. Mm. And I continue to lean towards targeting Ferrothorn, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, even if you Ice Beam Zekrom, it's fine. Okay, they don't Protect. Yeah, that should win us the game then. This whole time I was just playing around potential Protects. Um, but we get the heal off. Kyogre needs a crit on Zekrom right now with Ice Beam to stand a chance, I think. But they just keep going for Water Spout. It could be Scarf Water Spout, to be honest. Um, but, wow, Comfy even hung on from that. I was not expecting that. Okay, huge. You can see why I brought so much anti Ferrothorn stuff, though, right? I get completely destroyed by that in this matchup. Like, absolutely crushed by it. So, you against Ferrothorn, you just need to look for big opportunities of attacks and damage like that. Max moves are really important. Having super effective damage in the back is really important. That's exactly why I had Instant plus Urshifu. And the crazy thing is, even with all of those, I'm like, I'm not sure we win. <laughs> but that's why I wanted... Getting that Max Lightning into Ferrothorn to just set up terrain was really, really huge. So, yeah. I mean, that was the best possible string of games I could have asked for with Zekrom, to be honest. We did run into pretty good matchups as well, but I have to say that the reason why this team... One of the reasons why it's so strong is because it actually has a positive matchup against most of the top tier, like, restricted team compositions. We didn't get to go up against Sun today, so I'm hoping we get to face off against that, like, maybe tomorrow, because then we can try out the Thunderous plus Urshifu combination, which is designed very specifically to beat the crowd on. Either way, though, this team was an absolute blast to use, so thank you to the original creator once again for the team. Check them out, link down in the description below. Thank you, as always, for watching. Please feel free to try out this team. It is really, really strong, and yeah, uh, I normally try to get some practice games in before, but I didn't even get any practice games in because I thought the team report just was so well done that it covered, like, how to really play and optimize with this team. So you've seen the team in execution, but please go read that team report because it will give you really, really good ideas on how to approach certain matchups. And that was definitely helpful when I started playing with it today. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like as always. If you did, feel free to try out the team. Check out the creator and their team report and the rental all down in the description below. Don't forget to answer that question of the day and I'll catch you all next time. All right, peace.